Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, longtime drummer with Luke Bryan, Kent Slucher. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, folks? Yep, it's that time. It's time for another exciting edition of the Rich Redmond Show, coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA. On this podcast, we talk about all things music, motivation, and success, and we're really lucky today because I've got my co-host, co-producer, Jim McCarthy. What is up, Jim? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. You've gotten so busy, and you're, you've got this robust um, just roster of p- podcasts that you're producing, doing voiceovers for, all that kind of stuff. So congratulations. But, you know, today, today's guest, we go way, way back, and I was before we started rolling the cameras here, I said, Jim only wanted to come to one of these things today because you know this guy. We go way, way back. This is one of the greatest... He's a world-class drummer. He's a world-class friend, hailing from the great state of Kentucky. He's worked with Anthony Smith. He's worked with Pam Tillis, the Gatlin Brothers, Oak Ridge Boys, Susie Boggess, James Otto. And for the last 15 years, he's been playing nonstop with one of the most awarded country music stars, Mr. Luke Bryan. And that person is, drumroll, Kent Slusher. What's up, buddy? Hey, everyone. How are you? You know, when we're all in our man caves, like Jim is renting some sort of office somewhere because his wife likes to get him out of the house because they've been married a long, long time. Uh, I'm in my man cave, Crash Studio. You're in your man cave. What do you call it? Uh, Four on the floor recording. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it, it just makes sense. That's that's my you're favorite. A fan of, uh, you're a big fan of four speed transmissions. It, 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 totally. It, it, that's that's my favorite thing. Four actually. on the floor. Yeah. yeah, and I actually thought about it because we have two dogs, and I was like, actually, I could say it on the floor, right? But uh, yeah, we're doing four on the floor. It's, yeah, that's always been my favorite groove. Just that's the way to get people dancing. Four on the floor, right. you can't go wrong. No, you're right, you and you have to, and you have floor. to master that, and you have, man. You you play yeah, a very yeah. muscular musical four on the floor, well, man. Thank you, sir. Muscular. Thank you, thank you. You know, eight on the floor is it's that it's that break on Ringo. <laughs> that one, that one. Yep. Right, Jim. Talk for those of you. Shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, flock them, flock them, make a make a lot of cash. Falling rocks. You know what's the old one is practice. Look at him now. Look at him now. Look at him now. Practice. Um, get a good gig. Get a good gig. Make a lot of cash. And the cash you got to end up on the China like a surprise. Make a lot of cash. Make a lot of cash. I get it. It's got a sizzle on there. So, buddy. We go way back, um, you know, Kentucky, just right up the way from Nashville. And I, you might have to dust off my Prevagen, in, in need of Prevagen brain, but I think you were like working in a music store or something. You connected with yeah. this guy, Anthony Smith, and that turned into yeah. the Pamtillis gig. And Take us back, man. So, so what was happening is I was playing in Kentucky. Uh, my dad had retired. I was playing in my dad's band. And up to that point, um, just doing that, just playing Central Kentucky, or like where, anywhere in Kentucky we could play, uh, playing quite a bit. And then um, I, st- I got another gig in Lexington, Kentucky, playing, uh, I think it was four nights a week to about 2 a.m., you know yeah. the deal. And then How old were you at the up, time? I was, man, I was probably, <clears throat> gosh, early, you know, mid-20s, you yeah. know, something like that. Yeah. At this point, when I got um, – well, I got I got noticed if you want to cut my break. Yeah. Uh at in a place called Cadillac Ranch I was playing. And there um there was a guy named Carl Shannon, rest his soul, he's no longer with us. But <sighs> that guy, I I literally told him, uh, and I'll go back, but I told him one day, so when I can get you a drum set, I'm gonna give you one of my drum sets when I can afford it. And 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 I and I kept my word and I gave him a drum set because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing this. So he it, it was so random. He's like so he'd come and watch me play, and they do those live broadcasts from the from the uh, you know the venue you're playing or whatever. Yeah. And so he went to CRS, uh, and he told me that, I, hey, I dropped your name to a guy named Anthony Smith. I told him there was this young, hungry guy who was ready to go on the road, and he, you know he's got the goods and this and that. And I, you know, and I was like, oh man, thanks. You know, that's cool. You know, I just took it with a grain of salt. I was grateful, but you know, 
you very rarely would you hear back from something like that. Well, lo and behold, I was working a Saturday at the music store. We were really busy and they paged my name over the uh, intercom. So I went and picked up the phone. You know, I thought it was somebody wanted to order drumsticks or something, you know, the, us the usual stuff. So I picked it up and he's like, hey, Kent, this is Anthony Smith, and blah, blah, blah. I kind of, I thought it was a joke at first because I was, I knew about Anthony because of the song, If That Ain't Country, that was out. And I was like, yeah. this dude's, this dude's killer. And he's like, my name, you know, your name came up and uh, there's a guy named Carl Shannon that really believes in you. And I'm following my gut. I just have a gut feeling and everybody says I'm crazy, but I'm, I'm, I want you to come down and audition. Beautiful. And come to find out the reason they said they thought I was crazy because that's the time. Again, God bless his soul. Mike Kennedy was playing. Yeah. with them but obviously was playing with george so couldn't do the gig and i had heard of all these drummers that were playing that had done the gig and i was like oh my gosh there's no way i can hold up to these guys these guys are legendary and i look up to these guys big time but uh i literally learned that that record inside and out i i just dissected every part and i went in and auditioned and come to find out that that was his uh record release party ah which I had no idea, you know, and I'm playing with these great musicians, got him Dal Tomlin on bass. Yes. I don't know if you know Dal. Dal yeah. was just. Yeah, he's with Reba. He's with mean, Reba. Yeah, man, he crushed it. I was playing with all these guys and they're kind of grinning, you know, and I was like, I think that's a good thing. But again, you know, I've got huge shoes to fill here. So just getting a call at this point is really cool. And uh, I remember we ran through the songs. I think it was like six tunes. Ran through the songs and he called me back to the dressing room. It was at 12th and Porter. Yeah. And he called me back. He goes, he gave me a backstage pass because you're going to need this. I was like, do I need this for the night? And he goes, no, you're going to need it. I want you, I want you to be my drummer. Oh, have the gig. Tear. And I just remember, oh my gosh. I just remember literally I drove my dad's Dodge Caravan uh, to tennis, to Nashville uh, with my drums and everything. And I, and I went out in my truck or his, his vehicle and called my mom, called my dad. Uh, and just, I was, I was crying. I was overjoyed because yeah. this is what we've all, you know, strived for. And every, you know, I've always said, play like somebody's watching you at all times. And that's the way mm. I approached all the gigs. Um, and sure enough, that's kind of how it happened. That you worked know, out because all. people were it's, watching. People it did was talk. crazy. Yeah. I had no idea, you know, and I was just having a good time doing my thing and, and trying to improve weekly. And, um, you know, I had to, I was thrown into the fire really quickly. Um, how to play to a, you know, a, luckily my dad prior to that had get, gotten me a, a, a click track to play with. I got me a metronome and he's like, he, I remember him telling me, he goes, if you want to work in Nashville, you're going to need one of these. And I was like, now, oh. was your dad a musician? Yeah. My dad's a killer guitar player. I played with my dad. <sighs> he was in a real popular top 40 band through Kentucky and he just retired. He was tired of it, setting up and tearing down and, and the whole thing. But I played. Did he just recently band. retire? Uh, it's been quite a few years now, but, oh, yeah. um, when he was done, um, I just kind of went to another local band around town there and just kept working. Man, you know, the and, family band. Yeah. That's amazing. When your dad can it's look crazy. at you like, no, too much, yeah. less, oh, yeah. you're rushing, and you know, God bless him. You know, he, he knew that, I guess he knew something that I didn't at the time. Obviously it was like, you know, I was going through my phase of three rack toms, two floor toms, two snare drums, every symbol I, I could possibly he never said a word. It sounds you like know, Jim's just, setup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just why not? So it's it's just it was he let me go through those phases and eventually it became one rack tom, two floors, you know, and yeah. he just kind of would give me a look if I do something stupid. And I still occasionally get those looks from 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 Buck, the guy I play with, you know. And <laughs> but it's funny, but it's funny, you know, and I I kind of took note of that and he always told me, you know, if you go, if you mess up on stage, you'll remember it more. You know, if you mess up, you'll you'll remember it the next time. You know that kind of stuff. So yeah. I take a lot with what Dad said, and, and kind of uh, just kind of implemented it in, in the gigs I've done. So God bless him that you got a musical. Yeah, fan. and and and, yeah. and mom, you, st you still have mom. Mom's a great singer. Yeah, still sings. Wow. But she's she's you know retired as well, but a fantastic singer. You know. What is she, this she, retirement she was, she was you speak of? <laughs> what do they do? Do they play golf? Is they, it part they, cheesy? They, my bocce dad, ball? My, well, my dad. My dad uh, works at a service department at a at a I think it's a Dodge dealership right now. So he's got a fun. Uh, he's he's got like years. a yeah, just keeps him occupied. So, he, he's so just, yeah, he's one of those guys that if he sits still, he'll just he'll just fade away in the dust. He's he's a worker, man. That guy is 
you know, work anybody that I've ever known or will know probably. So nice. You know, we all got know, a, you know, the, purpose. yeah, we all know those guys that if they sit still, that's when they start getting bored and yeah. they got to find something to do. So he's that guy. And my, my mom just stays home and, and um, she's just enjoying life. Nobody you know? should retire ever. Nobody should, you don't ever retire no. in what we do, you know, and no. my dad still gets, he plays in church now and he's got a younger son that he, that's a good guitar player as well. And he kind of, uh, you know, plays along with him on some gigs and stuff. And it's, it's pretty cool to see him pay it forward and give it back uh, to his, to his younger son as well. He's got a younger I a, son. I have a 13 year old brother, if you can believe that or not. So like later <laughs> in life, they're like, oops, later in life, dad's like, you know what? I'm a heaven. Now. And so he did let's do that and again. God, God, yeah. Let's, mm-hmm. let's, let's go through all that again. And, and he does. And the kid <laughs> kick and play, man. He's a good guitar player. Oh my he God. Really 13. Play. Yeah. Um, I'm doing the math. You're just a little younger than me. Have you hit the big five Oh yet? I'm four. I'm 47. I'll be 47. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, he's, younger, mm-hmm. he's a year younger than I am. Yep. I'm 40. Yeah. I'll be 47 this year. God bless. What, uh, same age as Tully. October, October. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll be in October. Uh, October nineteenth is my yeah, Tully. So. Tully's older than me. Tully's five years apart from me, so he he could be forty eight. Uh, I think he's just a, he's he's about a year older than I am. Because so, I yeah, remember, he, I always mistakenly think he's younger than me. And he looks young. Jason. He's Jason's just, he's so young. younger than me. Yeah, all those guys look so young. Everybody in that band looks so young. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like. I got whatever they're doing. I need I need to do that. But yep. well, you got Michael there in the well. leather pants, those tight ass off. britches. A dude, a dude looks like he's twenty three years old. I'm like, man, I, I just I'm throwing in the towel. I just can't. Yeah. I'll, I'll be back in the back. That's why I hide behind the drums. I don't. Oh, need to dude, be and but now your your look. setup nowadays is a uh, single kick, one up top, two below. Is that right? Yeah, that's what okay. I've been doing for 20, 20 some odd years now. Yeah, the bottom. Me too. Yeah. It's we all One, Nashville yeah. gravitated toward that. Everybody's doing it. Like, yeah. well, it's like and, and, somebody's got to break that trend, man. Bring back well, the, the main kicks. the main reason I do it. The main reason I do it is for the ride position. I like the ride yeah. right there, and it's for no other reason than that. I just like that the ride being me too. Very the Ringo is just right there. Yeah, yeah. just well, right you, there. You can do you know? like the double kick Queensrÿche Scott Rock and Field from Operation Mind Crime. You know, and I, you I've. Do the, I've always done some crazy racks and stuff mm. like that, and I try to get a little uh, experimental with that stuff. But but the meat and potatoes of it is run rack two floors. One it, you know what it is, and it, at the heart of that, even if you have an X hat, cowbells, multiple Chinas, yeah. a gong, yeah. gong bass drum, the heart of it is still a Ringo kit. Like absolutely, the, you know, I know how I know your playing style. We have a very similar playing style, muscular. You know, the floor tom, the second floor tom is used more for de bluge as opposed exactly. to going around. You know, there's less you, stick dense on that drum because it gets yeah. used less. That's the 16 gets wore out. Tony's out. Tony, the drum tech is always, he's on me, man. You weren't at 16 out, but it's right in the wheelhouse. You know, it's right there. Sack of doom. Yeah. And actually my kid, I'm sitting here looking at it. The, the 18 inch floor Tom has a towel on it and has drumsticks on it. So, you know, I mean, it's mic'd up and ready to go if I ever need it, but nine Four. times out of 10, it's, it's the rack Tom floor Tom. And that's it. I love it. That we're both that's in our man fair. caves and we're reminiscing. Yeah. Yeah, Back in the looking, day, Rich talking about my big old drum kit. That was my Carter Beaufort phase. Oh, so, yeah. 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 Hey, Jim, you'd be happy. I went to go see Carter Beaufort. Uh, I did a three-hour show at the Bridgestone the other night. I, I heard he crushed it, too. He's still crushing. Yeah. He's still that dude's crushing. in his mid-60s. Good for what? him. What? I want to say he's in his mid-60s, somebody told really? me. Really? And I didn't look it up to confirm that, but I was told he was in his mid-60s. Yeah. He's still just playing like that, you know? Just killing A lot of those guys, too. You know, it's just that's what you do. If you do what you love. That's you know, athletic I like drumming. To, I like for to, sure. I like to think it keeps you keeps you mm-hmm. young. So or at heart at least. So hell yeah, buddy. So, totally. Put the ride symbol on the left. Play with your left hand. Yes, he does. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I've tried that. Benante do does it. that too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Benante does it. There's a lot of guys that can pull that off. I I did it one time playing a uh, I was playing a gig, you know, like a weekly gig. And I set up I would set up weird like that, just change my setup from time to time. And I like played a six months open handed just to train myself to do that you know and 
you, you ever know, break just, your uh, main kick pedal and have to use your slave? Done it a c- couple times. <laughs> uh, uh, I, yeah. I always think those about are, that, especially on television shows and stuff. You're like, oh, please don't break are, on this. Yeah, those are fun to change during the show, aren't they? Yeah. 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 You got a guy down there, and you're trying to get your arms out of the way. You're like, hey, at least take me out to dinner before you yeah, get down like, there, hey, man. Hey, Jeez. Hey, hey. Go to an acoustic <laughs> number for crying out loud. <laughs> Tell him a joke. Yeah. Mm. So. So, so you were you were with Crush kind of when I knew you, but now you're when we were out together because we did the My Kind of Party Tour 2012, we and we may have done either it was either 2011 or 2013, but we did two years in the trenches. Together. We did another one. We did another. Yeah, and it was one of them was uh, I want to say it was semi in the <laughs> round, like we had people behind us. That's right. That's on, on one of those tours, and I can't remember which. I, I just remember it was humongous. There was a uh, there was there was something huge. in the round, and there was a portion of the show where Luke and Jason did several acoustic numbers that were unaccompanied we'll by front. us, and we can go yes. we, we could go pee, and that was always yep. fun. Yeah, yep, they would go all the way to the front house, and uh, I remember guys trying to climb over the railing and jump on the. Th- it's it was it was nuts. It was crazy. So man, we the had good a old the good old days. Yeah. We had a great time, buddy, and, and it's like you know you're a survivor, man. You did this is rarefied air to play with somebody that popular, um, and for that long and 15 years, um, you know, and no signs of slowing down. I mean, the guy is a household name, you know, and you guys have all those fun things. You're of course you're doing your tours, but then you have charity yeah. events and television yeah. appearances, and you got this crash my playa thing, which who knows? Yeah. Maybe we'll be joining you again next year. I would like that. I would yeah. like that. I would like that. To, it's. Yeah, he does that. He you does know, the I mean, farm I, I'm tour. I'm not opposed to joining does. you on that either. So you should. You, should, <laughs> hey, you know what I'm there. thinking? Podcast from uh, Crash My Ply. Why not? Yeah, all about that. In the I don't know about the Wi-Fi. I don't know about the Wi-Fi down there, but That's we've t- we've taken the podcast on the road before. So that would be that would be cool. Let's do it from the sand. <laughs> I like that. You know, Jim, we have had some invitations and requests for us to do this, a podcast live edition. Like my friend John Billings has a, a wine bar with like tapas and he wants us to do the podcast from there. So, John, if you're listening, we will do it, man. There you Maybe go. Can. Why not? There you go. We can totally do it. Hey, you know what I didn't know? I just was doing my, you know, my trolling. I was trying to troll the internet for all the factoids yes. about Kent that I didn't know. Oh boy! From backstage conversations, and so now with the icing and the ibuprofen, yeah. um, you know, technically you can take ibuprofen every day, like eight hundred milligrams. Um, mm. But are you icing after every show religiously? After. Usually so, not not like I should be, but yes. So you just get the ice bag and you put it right there. Everyone's right there. decompressing, talking about the show. Yeah. You're like, yeah, it was a great yeah. job. You know, yeah. Ice. And I've got a brace I'll wear. I've got a bra- well. I've got a brace I'll wear that kind of holds the thumb there that I was told to wear. Right. Uh, that kind of just braces everything. But they, again, that's as needed. It's it's the pain. It, you know, it it varies. If it's yeah. a level two pain, I can do it. Go get my, through my it. Wife, you know, the, She's a massage therapist by trade, and she's got these ice mittens, mitts. Yeah. They fit like, you know, um, pot holders over your hand. Yeah. And you can hey, wrap I, your entire hand. I want to yeah. do that, man. So what, what, yeah. what, keep, what keeps them cold? It's you, you put them in the refreezer and, ah. wrap them and put your hands in for five or ten minutes, and it does the job. Like That's you know, a so great idea. Bed. I'm doing well, that. And also, my well, mom was a nurse, you know, and she's like, Le you know. That's what it's called. Okay, I got I got to do that, but but th- that brace, um, people that have like tingling issues sometimes I'll wake up in the morning like with the tingle, yeah. and you got to run it under some hot water. You get the coffee, yeah. you get the blood flow, and everything. Mm. But they say sleep with those braces, like the brace. I've mm. heard that as well. So sleep, yep. so because you got eight hours with it in this perfect position, you're not yeah. leaning on it. It's not in any contorted position. It's just perfect. Like boom. Oh. I'm just beat up. I had to, I have uh, plantar fasciitis in my kick pedal foot. Oh, so I had to had sleep that. in one of those boots for a while. That pulls it, mm-hmm. and it was painful, man. There was one tour, but luckily, and we're very blessed to have a massage therapist out with us that knows nice. your ailments, and it's the same one every show. So she knows, okay, well, his shoulder's bad, or his wrist bad, or his knees bad, or well, we you really need one of those. As needed. Man, I'll tell you, it's 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 come it's came in real handy. You know, I'm going to request awesome. one. You know, what I mean, but the thing is, is dude. We do get some masseuses, but yeah. it's not the same person every show. See, that's the, if you can, if, I mean, it's been, like I said, like if you got a bad knee or back, they know exactly what your problem is. You can go in there for maintenance oh, every man. other day or every day. And Hey, she's like, she knows where to, where to work and, and to stretch and things. And it's, it comes in really handy for, yeah. you know, the wear and tear. You I went for touring in a van. 
down by the river eating government cheese, paying for your own <laughs> sticks at the drum shop, to traveling in a beautiful tour bus, four catered meals a day with a masseuse, and some guy to set up your drums, dude. Congrats. It's, it's ridiculous, man. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's I'd I never in a, mad, in a million years imagined. I, I knew Luke. I knew Luke was going to do well, and I, I always believed that he would be successful at this at, to this level. I, I really, and it started when we were out with you guys. It, that's yeah. really when it started to get big, and a lot of that, you know. And it's I got to see Luke do with artists what Jason did with Luke. You know, kind of took him out and put him in front of that crowd, and you know, so that means a Who lot. Who are those folks, know. Kent? Oh, oh my gosh! I mean, well, I don't want to say that that. That, but it definitely didn't hurt. But Morgan Wallen went out with us yeah. one year, and he was the wheels were definitely starting to turn already. And actually, the year that COVID hit, he was supposed to go out with us again. But obviously, he didn't need us anymore. <laughs> but or Luke, I should say. But um, I want to say the year year before Cole Swindell. That's right. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think who else. Cole Mitchell Ten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Cole's done well. Uh, Mitchell Tenpenny. It went and did his own headlining thing, you know, and so there's been a lot of and, and and tons I'm forgetting, I'm sure, but there's the ones that I think of right off the top of my head that have that have done well. And oh, Florida Georgia Line was oh, out um, with us, yeah. And, but that that again that that wheel was start to turn. I mean, Cruise was the biggest song ever, I think. So, and that's that crazy because Sean was originally yeah. Luke's drummer, Luke, and then he ends up playing yeah. with Florida Georgia Line, opening yeah. for you, and then they explode, and now yeah. he's doing the solo thing with um, yeah. 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 yeah, with with Tyler, yeah. So, with Tyler. and then yeah. then I then I followed you and Pam Tillis. A lot of people don't know that. Oh yeah, yeah. So you were with Pam, and then I think there was a guy named a guy named Scott in between us. He was there for a little bit, but I, all, by all rights, replaced you. Yeah, in that band. you did yeah. five years of Pam Tillis. Um, Matt Spiker running <laughs> yeah. sound and road yeah. managing and being the, yeah. the, the husband lover figure. Um, yeah. And then who else was in the band with you and Pam's band? Man, what a great band. It was uh, da uh, Darren Favorite. Yeah. Guitar, who hired me. Uh, Mary Sue England, who Mary you know. Sue? Yeah. Um, um, a girl named Bethany Dix, who was incredible. I, I forget where she lives now, Atlanta or somewhere. Oh, yeah. Um, David Spiker, Duke, yes. Duke. on bass. Weston Mays on keyboards, a guy named Tim Lusby on, on steel. And I made lifelong friends from that gig, you know, and I went from the Anthony thing to Pam and, you know, Pam, man, she likes keeping it in house. So I got to play on a couple of projects of hers and yeah. a live DVD thing and all that stuff. And I learned a lot about music from playing with Pam and I still love her to this day. She's been yeah. really good to me. So I have not seen yeah. her in so long, but I would love to. I haven't seen her in a while, but we will I'll shoot a text and say, Hey, I'm thinking about you. Time to time, and usually about six months. She'll t six months later, she'll text me back. <laughs> oh, hey, how you doing? Not, you know. Would it be crazy if me and you just like showed up at her front door, like, right. hey, your two past drummers are yeah. here? We got like a bag of gummy bears and with two with two, with two drum kits. We're like, hey, we're going to play. We're, we're like, we're going to sit up and play. Yeah, let, yeah. Let's let's do the drummer tour. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it'd be fine. Yeah, wait, well, we're off two months. Let's go. Let's go do something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I never would imagine that that I would be sitting here and you know i saw you with uh golly rushlow back rushlow way back yeah. when My and God. i was playing with anthony diamond rio was on the gig and that's right i remember seeing you man i was like man i, I that's i want to do this i want to i want to keep this i want to have that attitude i want to have that that whole thing and that positivity and uh man oh, well, thanks, man well, you did it, and you bought a house. You got a roof over your head. You're raising a family. Yeah. You got the four, the two dogs with the eight legs, um, <laughs> two babies. And it, it's amazing. Kids. Congrats, man. Um, Crazy. So, now, who were some of your influences coming up? Was it were you the oh, uh, Ringo Bonham guy? Who were your guys? I, I well, the reason I picked up drumsticks was Peter Chris. I, you know, like a lot of people from our, for from our our our, our age group, uh, saw Peter Chris on TV. I saw Kiss in general, yeah. and I was just blown away. I was like, my God, that is incredible but musically uh bonham uh, my cousin was more the rock side of things uh so bonham and more bands than anything like uh, black sabbath led zeppelin fleetwood mac um alice cooper back in the day um journey uh all these bands that uh, even the guitar like I, I did guitar playing as much as i do anything so yeah. a lot of those aren't off uh his early stuff with with uh you know, the too. Melissa Etheridge records and the Cougar records and 
all that stuff, just those drum parts, Blaze of Glory, the parts on that, all that stuff that he played on. You know, it's all it's all it's all parts. You know, right, it's and all it, parts it of you. Sense. It's in your you yeah. made your Frankenstein it's in monster. My DNA. Yeah. Well, like you said, like you said, you take all these influences, you throw them in a pot, and you stir it around, and that's sure what you and you kind of get out. And uh, Mick Fleetwood, the, his unorthodox <sighs> way of playing. Myron Grombacher, who I think is one, yeah. one of the most underrated drummers on planet Earth. Yeah. Um, Billy Squires drummer, Bobby Chenard, Bobby Chenard. Unbelievable. He was like a bottom. He was a bottom guy, you know, just boom whack and, and crushed it and played on a lot of other records that people You're didn't right. realize. So guys I, like that. Yeah. And then, but then on the other side of things, you know, Trey gray was always, I saw him with faith Hill years and years ago. And I was like, wow, that dude. He's bringing it for sure. So like maybe some of the yeah. younger kids that might be like listening to this, like some of the old salty yeah. guys that have been around Nashville, they're like, Oh yeah, yeah Trey, of course. Um, Trey. but you know, um, Tim and faith, Reba, yeah. Brooks and Dunn, Jewel, he, Jewel. Jewel. He, he was played, the played model the for the, the young, yes, hip high energy guy that would move to Nashville. And we, and, and he was like one of the first guys to be swinging those huge backbeats. And he really had an opportunity to set himself apart because when I moved here in 97, you know, we're rock drummers. You had to tame that thing. It was like, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. And now it's just like, if you're a rock drummer, yeah. sleeveless rock drummer that can run Ableton, you got a gig. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right. And I, I remember seeing Trey and he had a huge backbeat. And I'm like, oh, so you can. You can do, do. this on the right job. I mean, we can, you know, we can play the Western swing stuff and all that stuff, but, but my DNA is playing yeah. the big fat boom whack. That's what I've grown up doing more than yeah. anything. And I saw Trey bringing it and I was like, Oh, we can do that. You it's know, possible. that's cool. Yeah. Cause that's more my thing. And that that's really and Luke. I think really depends on, I don't want to speak for Luke, but I think he really digs, you know, playing those venues. They want to know that you got their two and four covered, you know, you got the and, two and, and the well, four covered. You need a license well, plate, buddy. All about well, the two, two and four. four. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's just they want to feel it, you know, and you want to make people's heads bob out there. And that's just kind of the way I play, you know, and I don't – it's not a conscious thing. It just kind of happens, and I have to consciously back it down a little bit, like if I'm playing indoor or at a, at a club or, or yeah. this and that. And so – but, you know – you can still get a nice fat tone out of a snare, not it. It's hard. So. Well, you 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 play. You know, the head and the heart are there, but you play from the waist down. If you know what right. I mean. I you know what well, I mean. You're, you're there's definitely an X rating in your playing. Oh, I was wondering to leave the room or something. Hey, no. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey, you know what? Jokes. Hey, this is a love fest. So hey, if you're oh, thinking, hey. you're thinking about Bonham, Bonham, what are the um, what are some of those standout tracks, man? Man, what the one the one I always go to automatically is uh the wonton song. Yeah. And it's it's his right foot. It's if you if you really dissect that song and listen to what his right foot's doing, yeah. It's in it's insane. You got that it's speed insane. game moving, man. Doing it, you know, and, and that um of course Which one which one is the wonton song? The wonton song is da 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 the wonton song yeah i worked in classic rock rock late <laughs> jim talking take two i worked in classic rock radio for freaking three years yeah. and i never is that what it's called the wonton song the wonton song. someone yep. just went had chinese and then they wrote the song you know they went out for yeah. chinese food came back yeah huh. and fortune uh, next, cookie and it said write a song and they did but uh that one in of course you know the old standard when the levee breaks oh yeah uh, just the space. I like that. that uh, bunk, uh, oh, 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 dire maker. Yeah. Yeah. Is it dire maker or Jermaker? Jermaker, whatever it is. Yeah. That yeah. One. Cause I, I was chastised. Uh, I'm like, that's dire maker. So I've from de I've de yeah. That, that's the way it's spelled, right? D Y D Y E R maker. Jermaker. So it's pronounced Jermaker. That's what I was told. Okay. I was, now, cause now I was I saying know. it the wrong way. No, I know. And that um, John just, he, he kind of inhabits all the things in one drummer that I dig. You know, the, the, he's got the swing. He's got the, the groove. He's got the attitude. The drum he's sound. Got the, he's got the big sound. He's got all that. And yeah. it was all in one guy. And then, you know, you had Keith Moon on the other end of it, who was spazzy. And, but everything he played made sense for yes. the song. And it's just playing for the song, you know. 
when you would shed it as a kid in your yeah. teenage years, like we all did. Mm-hmm. Um, like my go-tos were always Journey, Van Halen. Yeah. And then my brother, by proxy, he had the Rush Chronicles album in his oh, bedroom. Boy. That, you know, yeah. took my playing from here on up to yeah, absolutely. the atmosphere. Absolutely. And uh, but what, what was your choices when you would shed it? Like if you wanted to pull a song out of the old woodshed now and you can play it note for note, which would, which song would that be? I tell you what, a record in general, two records in general that I wore out was, uh, and I don't know why the, these particular, I mean, I do, I did then, but now I, I, it makes sense to me. I just had accessibility or access to the high infidelity record, the REO Speedwagon record. Mm. And I could play uh so you think you don't let it go. Don't let him go. Mm. And I would play uh, Journey Escape from top to bottom. Just that record Damn. is just, that's a drum clinic, just that record in itself. Yeah. So, you know, obviously I was playing it the way I would play it at six or seven, eight years old, but the high infidelity record was more simple in its playing. And I, I could kind of grasp my head, wrap my head around that playing style more so. And then, but then the older I got, the more I kind of adapt, gravitated toward the escape record. And that, like I said, that whole record is just a masterpiece, in my opinion. And another record was Journey Captured Live, wow. uh, which is absolutely incredible. Again, it's yeah. a clinic on on all things music. Steve Smith, um, man. Yeah, that and uh, the Fleet, later in life, the Fleetwood Mac, Rumors Records, uh, stuff like that. I would just kind of listen to and the all-encompassing the song in itself, not just the drum parts, but the melodies and the, yeah. I'm a sucker for a melody, man. I mean, it, it doesn't me matter. Too. A melody can make me cry. It doesn't have to have lyrics to it at all. You can just feel it. You know, a guy that, a guy that moves me when he plays or a band in general, it's a guy named Warren Haynes from government. Yeah. Mule. yeah. When that guy, sees, Brothers. He, yeah. When, when Warren yeah. sings or plays, you feel it. And I, yeah. and that's what I love about, the, about people like that. That just, they don't have to say anything. You can see it and you, and you feel it. Yeah. No, no War, words Warren just gets about. music. I, I was lucky Man, enough to play dude. with him a couple of weeks ago, oh. you know, and we had to do Sweet Home Alabama. Oh, and we yeah, didn't want to. Did yeah, we yeah. did the thing. But, and he didn't, we didn't want to do Sweet Home um, with a click, but we wanted to lock it down to a tempo. So Warren would start this song, Sweet Home Alabama. You've heard it a million times. You've pl- heard it played a million times incorrectly. This guy, I would, he would start it. I would hit the click, a bar in. It was perfect every time. <laughs> and yeah. it was like, ding, ding, digging, go, get, dig, dig, go, to get, dig, dig, go, dig, go, Almost like a little, almost like he a had drummer. The grease on it. Yeah, he had, he the had all on the it, little so notes. Yeah. That everyone yeah. leaves out and just like, oh yeah, da 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 da. da, yeah. da let's yeah. we'll play this for tips, you know. Right, right. You know, I've got I've got uh, a surprise for you guys. I, I actually played with uh, in a band with Warren Haynes or a gentleman that looked like Warren Haynes. I don't know if you can see him. Yeah, we can see him. Oh, well, he looked um, like Warren, right? Yeah, he? he's got the hair. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, man. That, that that gentleman <laughs> is known as the Pope, and he would he would dress up like the Pope. No, what band is that? In Connecticut. Connecticut White Bread. And, oh yeah, uh, he band called Connecticut White Bread. Or something. Uh, it says oh. cargo hatch on the back of his shirt. Okay. Nice. Yeah. High starch, high carbohydrate Hi, music. <laughs> <laughs> so, same question to you, Rich. Did what song would you be able to sit down and <laughs> and woodshed on if you had to? You mean like, you mean you, something you, that I, I could play out of the could, gate, note for note, out of out of memory, pure memory. Um. Hmm. Every single note, man. I don't know if there's anyone that exists, you know, because if I go to do the fill, it might be either back up or it might be right, back right. It's going to be in the well, spirit okay. of things. Ninety six percent accurate. Mickey Curry. There's I would probably guy. say I would probably say um, off the Scarecrow record, um, Small yeah. Town. Yeah. 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 I mean, every bit of phrasing, uh, all the turnarounds, all the kick drum yeah. patterns. Um, amazing. Carry Lone, on for me. Lone, oh, carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. Like Lee Hart, man. Oh, dude. But, uh, Mickey Curry's another one of those cats that yeah, uh, man. he's a part player. He's a well constructed part player. Uh, and the, the guy uh, still lives in his hometown and he never left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He blows me away. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've become friends with the guy who's playing with Brian now because Mickey just doesn't want to 
he doesn't want to go on the road. Well, so I was I, I was curious about that because Jim and I we interviewed Mickey during yeah. the pan the height of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, what's the guy's name? Pat. Pat Stewart. Yeah. Pat Stewart from great the player. early days. Yeah, great play. He played on uh, Summer '69. Yeah. Mm. But, so so but, uh, yeah. So he so Mickey doesn't want to travel anymore. That's what that's what I get. That's what I gathered. But I, I, I just think, yeah, I just think he, you know, why not? You know, yeah. that's what I, that's, I, that's what I assume. I don't know. I mean, he's Mickey Curry. Yeah. He can probably, he can probably stay at the house. And well, he had that legacy record. of uh, and a massive body of work as a young man. Hall and Oates, all the, I mean, all that the cult. The cult, the cult, Sonic Temple. Yeah. Yeah. God, you name it. The dude played on it. And uh, yeah. For sure, man. Oh. Hey, so so those are your influences, and what are your wh who's your drum tech right now? Because you've had a couple of guys. Tony who, Adams. Tony Adams has been my guy for, gosh, seven years. Was he the so, Matchbox guy? Years. Matchbox twenty. He guy? was Matchbox. Yeah, yeah. He, he he teched all those those two really big Matchbox records. Now, how'd you find him? Is he in Nashville? Uh, one of the guys that used to work with us, uh, our old production manager, knew him from uh, from Creed slash Alter Bridge. Ah. And they weren't working as much, and I, I stole them from Scott Phillips. When, <laughs> and the first time I met Flip, Scott, Scott Phillips, he goes, and I've been trying to get together how I'm going to sue you for taking my drum tech. He was joking, you know, <laughs> and Scott's a good dude and a great guy, but yeah, I'm so sure blessed is. to have had, so blessed to have Tony. That dude could tune a, tune a box, and it's going to sound great. He could tune it. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's so consistent. Yeah. There's a guy, you know, I think maybe even you and I talked about this before, but there's a difference between a guy who can set up a drum set and a tech. Yeah. You know what I mean? Guy that can set up a drum set and a guy that can tech a drum set and tune a, tune a drum set, two completely different yeah. ball games. And, and, tuning, and tuning it is like anybody can get pretty good at that. Yeah. But the, but the challenge is, the challenge is making that drum set sound good and consistent in a many times very noisy environments. And it sounds good for everybody. Any environment, indoors, outdoors, high exactly. ceilings, low ceilings, where it's consistent from the front of house. And because exactly. like Johnny doesn't use any muffling, like he tunes. Yeah. Whoa, We're wide open. Yeah. Totally wide open. And when I'm yeah. in the studio, like I'm a pretty good tuner, but there's always a little bit of gaff on there or here, something. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when I'm with Johnny, it's just like, it's just like, Doo. yeah, everything's it's wide so open. Pure, right? Yeah. Yep. Same. And, and what's too, too, and true for you as well, I would assume. Is we're cutting through a lot of guitars, yeah. yeah. So our drums got to they got to they got to cut through the mix, and so whatever they're doing is uh, is working right. And we got a guy at front house who's who's killer. He used to run for God Smack and that's right, Allison Chains. You know Frank totally, and he's 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 killer and he's he loves drums. So one thing about uh, you're going to be heard out there, and yeah. he does a great job. Feedback's always great. So not not feedback from him. But feedback from crowds and things. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let me I just in case he sees this. You don't get much yeah. feedback. <laughs> finding a finding a good a tech must be like a golfer finding a good caddy. It's hard. It's hard. Right. Like, like I was saying, you know, I can a lot of guys can set them up, but can you really, really get into the nuts speak. and bolts of it? Yeah. And and then of course yeah. they're they're basically they're play they're catering them to you guys. Right. You know, it's not important. No, it's important to them. It's what's important to you. Right. And again, and it doesn't sound like what it it doesn't matter what it sounds like you setting behind them. Yeah. I might not, I'm not, you're not tuning for, for, from right here. You're, you're tuning for front house. So the way yeah. I would tune would probably be completely different than, than the way he does. Plus the way you guys play yeah. in your in-ears or what mix are you, are you listening to the actual monitor mix or are you listening to front of house mix? From, uh, I'm listening to the monitor, monitor. Personalized okay, so mix. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, a different like, mix than front of house typically. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can get whatever you want. I, I personally like, is the closest I can get to a studio mix in my ears. I like hearing everything because you can't play musical without hearing what everybody else is playing. Right. Does that make sense? So it's like, I try to tell people, you know, Hey man, what do you got in your mix? Oh, just me and the singer. I'm like, well, what if the piano player is doing something really cool and you want to hit, hit, a, hit that lick with him or something the next the time. The piano player does you not know matter what I mean? to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you, it's, it's, I try to have a little bit of everything. It's like chamber music. Kind of, you got to have everything in there. 
or yeah. you know the, occasionally there's an instrument that is not going to help you in your cause and it might be lower than the other ones but like sure. I've got the sure. guitars panned like Kurt's over here so I've got him panned a little bit over here same, Jack's same. over here apparently and I want to hear the yeah, I told uh, Evan who's been our monitor engineer you know Evan oh, for yeah, ever yeah, and ever yeah. I said Evan can you make my drum sound like a Prince record so I just like the kick and the snare to sound very like a dance record and the toms are in there and I got a little bit of everything and everything of course the vocal this is sitting on top you want that you right. want to be able to lock yeah. with the bass and lock up kick drum patterns the guys are soloing you want to be able to interact with them but then you got clicks and loops those got to be kind of higher yeah. than maybe the rest of the band unfortunately yeah, yeah. unfortunately yeah well well the reason i say is because i've lost hearing over the years yeah. i've had a click track burying my eardrums for you know since i was 18 years old yes or whatever you know so you know, with that driving in, you know, people, if you have a, a buddy of yours out to the show or something, they'll put your ear pack on and listen to your. They're like, what? The and I, yeah, I'm over there looking at people. I'm like, and they're like, what? Yeah. You know, it's like a, it's like a, a, a ball pin hammer just cracking them in the ear. But to me, it's, it's joy. It's probably not enough. You know, that's uh, it's like, like when I videoed you recording one of Jason's records back a couple of years ago, Rich, you had me put, you know, the headphones on to kind of protect, protect my hearing. Yeah. And yeah. my gosh, I mean, I think it was, I'm like, dude, I'll just leave the headphones off. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I've lowered it over the years, you know what I mean? And there's the overall volume. I always, I try not to get above one o'clock on, right. on the pack. Same can here. You, can they sample anything? Like, can you make your kick drum sound like, you know, me going boom. And sure. then, you know, the snare Send going it back to you. smack. Sure. And then it's sort of like vocal cues, like, like Rich, you can't get enough of me. Why don't we just do that for you? Just sure. in your ears. Boom. Your kick crack. just sounds boom, like boom, boom, crack. <laughs> that'd be, yeah. Yeah. That'd be you know, incredible. Boom. But God, I'm all for it. Do it. A sample pack. Boom. Aren't you glad you brought me back on the podcast, Rich? <laughs> oh, yes. A sample pack. Yeah, it's a sample pack of, of <laughs> Jim's Jim vocal percussion. Vocal, you know drops of me just like snor you know, flubbing a line in a voiceover right there you Where go man. Like, vroom, vroom, and that could be the uh the, the sure. hi-hat you know that would be great. Vroom, 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 vroom. you know that's we, oh, um, be horrible <laughs> you know somebody i just thought about too, somebody i want to th uh, uh, talk about and if you don't mind of course rich do you know a guy named jamie wallam yeah sure he's plays for tears for fears that's another cat i've gone down the the rabbit hole of and watch playing and he's he's another one of those guys that just kind of gets the deal of playing yeah he just and I, really, I don't know why I, I, I just thought of him wanted to throw his name out because i yeah. think that guy's is very overlooked with for what he does and brings to the table yeah. as players and i just i don't know man i just go down these rabbit holes and brendan buckley and all these guys that just had torpy that, remember pat, pat torpy yeah was, wonderful was he, his name came up today yeah he was he was so in my opinion underrated when he was he was amazingly when underrated. when he was out and and i mean i remember that video he put out of him playing i was like this guy right blowing my mind i know the video you're talking nobody, about yeah they had the blue tama kit yep. yeah. and like all these dudes were like i was like where is this guy well they been? were huge in japan they were huge they were huge mr big huge yes. yep they were like and number the, one of the top five bands that would tour yeah and massive it, they were gods yep wow. i think they're going back there this year God, well, God, rest, God rest his soul yeah, man old pat man that dude was a bad boy <sighs> anyway was. man what about the guy like, uh from damn yankees michael uh um, michael cardelloni yeah. yeah. he's yeah. had that skinner gig for 100 years yeah right 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 he, he really has yeah he's so underrated he does it. He does. He does. Okay. A, he does a wonderful yeah. job. And you know, Ken, we always talk about you know the idea of commitment and relationships, yeah. the whole crash yeah. concept, but especially relationships. You and I really can lean our hat on that. Um, how did the? I don't remember this story. How did you get the Luke Bryan job? Okay, so um, I was playing with Pam Tillis, and well, <laughs> before that, let me let me backtrack. Uh, Keith Horn who everybody Keith knows yeah. in, the, in the bass player world or musician world in itself. He and I played together with Anthony Smith. And um, it was after Dow left. Dow was doing more studio stuff. So, so Keith came aboard and he and I played together in that gig. And Anthony just quit touring. You know, he wanted to, to, to focus more, just staying home and songwriting more. And so then I got the Pam gig through uh, Darren Favorite. And that kind of... It, it, 
ran its course and she had to take some time off. And I was back to, oh boy, what am I going to do? Oh no. <laughs> and then my phone rang and it was Keith Horn. He goes, hey man. He goes, how you been? I'm, I was like, I'm good, man. You know, looking for a gig. He goes, yeah, I thought you were looking. I'd heard that you were no longer with, you know, Pam went tour. And he goes, man, there's this new artist named Luke Bryan. And I think you're the perfect guy for the gig. They're looking to make a change. Are you interested? And he barely got the got got it out. And I said, absolutely, I'm interested. And he said, well, man, I'll give you the info, blah, blah, blah. This guy will get in touch with you. And I, oddly enough, Luke had opened for Pam at Centennial Park doing wow. some random gigs. So I saw Luke and I was like, man, this guy, he's got, he's got something. There's something there. And uh, I got the call to do that. And I went down and hung out and played and jammed. And here we are. And yeah. uh, so uh, that's how I got the gig. It was with the uh, recommendation of Keith Horn. So Were you Keith in the was first music enough. video that he put out? I was not. Uh, that was Sean. Okay. That was Sean. We With rode the hottie trucks. fiddle player? Um, uh, that was Christy Joe. Yeah. Christy Joe's just she's still in town, I think. Um, that you was could tell a, her I said she was a hottie. I, I, man, I haven't seen her in forever. I, yeah. I hope she's well. I, I keep up with her on Facebook. But um, other than that, I, I haven't seen her in a long time. But uh, that was Sean. That was Sean who went on to play with FGL. FGL. Yeah. yeah. So Sean. Yeah. It was so this whole thing, and it worked out for both of us very well. And man, I tell you, it's it's crazy. Sure so, and then like you said, having a gig that lasts this long, and and, and somebody that's that loyal to you, and it's been that good to me and my family, and the fact that I've been able to put food on my table for twenty one years just playing music is beautiful. It's 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 ass, it's just crazy to think right. that that has happened. And now I'm the old guy on the block, you mm -hmm. know. And I have these twenty, twenty eight, twenty nine year old guys. Man, I watched you play with so and so, and I really liked your playing and all this. And I'm like, what, what, whoa, that was, and I that was me, you know. And I still go out and I watch the openers. I still go down the YouTube rabbit hole. I still get that warm fuzzy feeling before I get up and play. Yeah, and I still man. like, you know what I mean? It's like I still am that young hungry 22 23 year old kid yeah man i still love it you know so it's it's so it makes me feel so good to to know that somebody noticed it you know for no other reason than you know i remember being that 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 guy so yeah and you know, Lucas, is, he cool. is just a nice guy. I mean, I'll, I'll see him at best. like at Drake's, you know, in Cool Springs. Yeah. He brings yeah. the kids in after a game. Time. We saw yeah. him at Brick Tops. Yeah, he yeah. just he's mm. always always he's a, a man dude, about man. town. Nice guy. He's a great guy. He's he's a family man. He's been good to his family. He's been good to my family. He's been good to the people around him and his circle. And I know him and Jason are tight. And yeah. I think a lot of Jason, you know, and, and the guys that I've got to know. There's there's a difference between knowing guys that are artists and you know if I was to see Jason right now he'd come up and say hey you know so that hey, makes man. yeah yeah that that's such a big deal and, and guys I've got to meet over the years and become acquaintances with and stuff like that so it's it's pretty pretty incredible yeah, you ever go still hunting with them I've never been hunting with them but I've been fishing no. with them I mean, and uh, I'm I'm a terrible fisherman so lake lake or to, deep sea ocean uh, both we've done both, both. yeah yeah but. Uh, I'm not a big hunt. I, I did all, most of my hunting and fishing when I was like 15, 14, 12. I've I kinda, never hunted. Yeah, I, I've done it. I just, I yeah. think I'm just too honorary to do Rich it Rich is now. quite the do. avid hunter. He goes out. Oh, I know. Day. He loves it. I he like to it. be in that tree stand and just wait for an innocent <laughs> creature to walk by. <laughs> Pow! With a bazooka. Yeah, I know. Actually, we, we, um, we went deep sea fishing one time. Um, and <laughs> that, that is a, that is a filmable event. We You're were all you. horribly hungover and just puking oh, off the side of the boat. Oh, yes. oh God. It was nice. bad. That's a, it was a terrible bad scene, idea. Buddy. Oh, my terrible goodness. Idea. I would it's, have been. I would have paid to be a fly in the wall to watch you. The drama mean did not work. Let me just tell this, you that much. This sounds like a DVD waiting to come out right there. It really does. <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> I would buy that for sure. Yeah. Oh my god. Like, so so Kent, you're easy to find on Facebook. It's Kent Dot Slusher, and on the Instagram, it's at K Sticks with an X. K Sticks Eight. Now, correct. do you yes, have sir. a a dot com? I don't. I don't. The only thing that you can really find me outside of that. Is uh, I play with a rock band side project thing called Quarantine. Oh, nice! Which which took place during quarantine, obviously. But it's Quarantine <laughs> with a K. It's we do all '80s Kiss stuff. 
That's awesome. Nice. So we got a few gigs booked. Just with Chris Jericho, the, the wrestler dude. With Chris Jericho? Oh, really? Yeah. That's great, yeah. Chris, man. Chris is my dude. Chris is my dude. And uh, PJ Farley, who played with a band called Trickster back in the day, who toured with Kiss in like 90 through two or whatever it was. I saw that tour. Anyway, it, it's all weird and, and it's, it's just crazy. Two of my favorite things. I'm, I'm still a, you know, I'm a Kentucky redneck and I love wrestling. What can I say? I did That's not okay. know you love wrestling, buddy. I do, man. Don't hmm. hold it against me. No, I didn't know. I mean, but, Chris, um, I have a lot of respect for Chris Jericho. I listened dude. to him on the uh, Mark Marin podcast and he's good. I, I, I see similarities cause he's like, he's got his thing, but then he's, he's a wrestler, but then he sings and he does a little acting and so he does some speaking. Much. The you guy know? doesn't sit still. Reminds yeah. me of somebody else I know. He's that a I might be looking at. It says Rich Redman, right? <laughs> oh, I know. The guy. I mean, he doesn't. I mean, the dude's always doing something. Yeah. But, yeah. With, uh, yeah, we're with doing that being shows. said, yeah. you know, being a, being in a Chris uh, Kiss a Kiss tribute band is that like if you had to put a like I've always said when I get into the time of my life where I can get back Ooh. to playing again. Yeah. I've always thought about doing a tribute band or maybe playing covers. I, I'm. Like the jury's out. I I just don't know. I'd like one day I want to be at a Huey Lewis tribute band. Yes. The next day I want to be in a you know uh, Bon Jovi Journey tribute band. Sure. They, yeah. Just fun music to play, right? Yeah. yeah. But what would it be for you if it wasn't Kiss? Who would be the tribute band you'd want to like? You know, I want to play oh, down on, on the man. Nice question, Jim. Ooh, dang, going. That's a tough one. Um, right. You know, just for because of the parts and things like that. Um, it was so musical. It would probably have to be Journey. There I mean, I go. know that's probably a cliche answer, but as a drummer and as a guitar fan, you know that that's kind of the two perfect the combination of, of both of the worlds combining. That I can't play guitar a lick, but I really love a great guitar player. And Sean yeah. was always that guy, very melodic. You could sing his guitar parts, and and Steve Smith. Need I say more? And then of course oh. Dean Castronovo, who's oh probably God. the best singer that's been in Journey since. Steve Perry, dare we say, say yes, yes, no, yes. no disrespect to anyone else that's yeah. doing that gig or has done, but man, Dean's Dean's incredible. <laughs> Dean so, probably comes off the stage and look, you know, talks to the that the, the new front man's like, hey man, he did pretty good tonight. Yeah, it's yeah. all right, man. I, I'll let you take it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I'm all, I'm also pulling double duty. I'm singing and playing the songs. Yeah. He's I'm playing Don't Stop Believing the way I'm a, I'm such a stickler for that song being played. That's, the that's right one of those way. parts. You gotta play yeah. the part right. It's yeah, gotta be the right have. way. And he yeah. sings it. Oh. Yeah, he's ridiculous. You guys yeah, he's... hate seeing me when I was playing with the spasmatics because we did Don't Stop Believing and I did not play <laughs> just it. Just play. I don't uh, play it. Sounds right like either. a bell of a symbol should be here. Yeah, maybe here. No, it's still it was it was like an eighty percent homage to the original yeah. part, but it was like I'm dressed like a nerd. And I'm going to just regenerate this thing. I'm going I to. I saw that gig. I saw it. Yeah. I saw that gig. It was down yeah. off of Demumbrian. That's uh, right. You probably the same one. Doghouse Saloon. The Doghouse. Yeah, years ago, dude. Yeah. I mean, ten years. Nine or ten or it's something. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. But I enjoyed I was at it. That totally. same gig, I think. Probably. Yeah. I enjoyed so that. So fun. <laughs> hey Kent, so no, yes, you know we we all know that you're on the road less because you know we all used to do 200 shows a year. Now we're yes. down to like 50, 60 shows, and yeah. so we have a lot more time. And you know you got your four on the floor productions, four on the floor studio. Um, how do people get in touch with you if they're a singer songwriter, they're an artist, they're a producer, they want you to lay down tracks, man? Yeah, I've gotten hired more uh, just through Facebook. Shoot people, shoot me DMs on there and you know just putting the feelers out on that i've got a lot of work through facebook dude facebook and, people uh, hate on it but it's, it's awesome man, i tell you I've, I've gotten i got aligned with a, stu a producer buddy of mine that has sent me more work than i can shake a stick at you know yeah. and, and it's he saw us on the cma awards and said i want that rhythm section so it was like random you know but and i was like yeah you know this guy i checked it out and it was legit and legit. he flew me down to florida and we started doing gigs or doing nice. some some work so and i still yeah. work with the guy about every week so wow yeah so yeah just through facebook just can't yeah. solution facebook through there or you know my instagram you can even dm me over there k sticks yeah, eight now you're doing so. some uh, t a teaching or slash consultations for people that are i was i was yeah. and it just never kind of Small fish, really big pond. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. if you can get Dave Weckle or me, what are you going to do for not much more more money? You can go to Dave Weckle. And I, it started out good, and then it just never picked up. Yeah. And uh, I, I just like, you know, I'm probably spending more time and money getting this thing up and going. 
keeping it going than, than it's worth right now. Yeah. I may revisit it down the line, and it did well, and it was fun. But for the money I was making on it, I could just I could come up here and do a track or two and be done and then still go downstairs and be with my kids when I'm home. So yeah. I just kind of had to weigh the, weigh, the, uh, weigh the good and the bad. And as much as I enjoyed it and, and, and really enjoyed communicating with the, the, I call them students that were on there. I, I loved it. And I still have a good relationship with those guys. So it, it's, yeah. we still talk and comment on each other's stuff and they're all good dudes. And I, yeah. I appreciate them, them buying the subscription to the thing, but it just wasn't, yeah. wasn't lucrative well I, hey I that's what we do it. you know we throw things out to hey, the universe try. and we jib and we jab and reinvent yeah. ourselves and you know I, I I've tried the you know drummers weekends or we did four of those where it's like yeah. ta-da a huge events limos yeah. and catering and then yeah. I tried uh, master classes which I still do from time to time but I found this offering that's literally just one day with me seven day, seven hours three hours in the morning we break have a nice lunch we do three yeah. hours in the afternoon the guys flying do out all their wives of it one day yeah. one day and it's one on one people appreciate appreciate that so that's the new thing that i'm just like i'm gonna just keep doing this do all of it in one day and, and kill all those birds with one stone and yeah accomplish the same thing you know yeah man that's cool yeah i remember i spoke at one of our, i was a part of the panel with liberty devito and amazing all these guys that i'm looking around at going why am i up here yeah it was miles uh, mcpherson so, and keo stroud oh, a, and yeah that was tom great, hurst and uh, a, all the cats man i was like my god why, why am i uh greg morrow Oh yeah, who, who mm. got everybody loves? Who's yeah. Brooks and Dunn now? He's playing with Brooks and Dunn. What a songbook, he's, man! He's beautiful. He's crushing it. So anyway, he's, so yeah, I can sit here and talk drums and drummers all day. But well, he's you know you've got easily another twenty, twenty five, thirty years so. in you of easy. But looking back, any like the fondest memories uh, so far? If you were writing your your uh, Bio biopic, man, I tell you. I think that obviously in, in chronological order, the first time I ever got to play the Opry okay. was, yeah. uh, was, was, you know, I mean, that's sacred ground. And then, then, uh, so I played that one time with Anthony and then I played it with Pam a bunch because yeah. as you know, she was an Opry member. So, and you, you'd go there and there'd be Amy Lou Harris and, and, and John Randall and all the, uh, all these Dolly Parton, all these people you have listened to and watched over the years and they're, 20 feet in front of you singing. So I cherish a lot of those memories. And then the first time Lou, I, the, we did a stadium or something and I just, I, I sat there, I cried. I still tear up from time to time. I mean, you're I'd, an I'd old softy like me, buddy. Yeah, man. I mean, I'd be lying if I said, I don't sit in there in between songs. And sometimes just I get caught up in the moment. I'm like, wow, you know, this is, this is the four year old kid who saw this on TV and now I'm doing it. And I try not to take it for granted, you know, and we all have weird days and stuff, but, you know, you just try to put it, put it aside for those two hours and, and bring it to the people that have paid, paid good money to come to, and see a show. And I, I just remember doing, I think it was, we did some stadiums that year and we did Wrigley Field, which yes. I had always watched, watched the Cubs online when I was a kid. Mm. So getting to play Wrigley Field and, um, just I don't know. Just the, the, it just hit me. Just getting to do that that holy ground that is, you know, Wrigley Field, and we got to do two nights in uh, in Boston at New England Patriots Stadium. We did two nights there one time, and yes, just all those moments of you know the first time I played CMA Fest, you know, which used to be fanfare, and you heard so much about this, and heard so much about it when I was a kid, and now I'm playing it. So just little things like that. That uh, if it wasn't for Luke, I'd never ever would have gotten to do and, and still do, you know, you do Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, you've done all the shows and it's just all this stuff that you've gotten to do that you really don't realize it till you look back on it and go, I really, that's incredible because you're in it and it's cool, but you really don't get to, until you take a step back and you go, this is incredible. And, yeah. and I've, I'm, I mean, I just met John Lithgow, you know, walking down the road, you know, just things like that, that just Bill Murray, in the Today Show dressing room, right? The bagels and the coffee hadn't yeah. even shown up. It's like 4.49 yeah. in the morning yeah. or something. And he's yeah. like, hey, guys, what's going on? This must be the band. Uh, huh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, fucking Bill Murray. Oops, we yeah. just got an explicit rating. Um, yeah. We got I Bill, you know, Bill Murray. <laughs> or, you know, you're, 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 uh, you're, you know, at the Fallon show and the dressing room is way down the hall and you're coming up, you're going towards more where the Roots dressing room is and you're like, oh, there's Carol Burnett. 
Like, yeah. hey, maybe I'll wave to Carol Burnett. Maybe she'll talk to me. She did talk to me. You know what she told me? She told well, me that drummers are the funniest people in any band. And I got to tell know. my band, ha! I told you. <laughs> from one of the be- from one of the best in the business, Miss right, Carol Burnett. Right. I, you know, I, I, I've I got to meet Stevie Nicks through Pam. That's one of my nearest and dearest, and she was one of the sweetest, kindest, most down to earth women I've ever or people I should yeah. say women. But one of the most down to earth people I've ever met in my life. Uh, randomly, I, I got to hang with Kenny Loggins. Yeah. In in the uh, in the dressing room at do you remember that when uh, Blake did Footloose? Heck yeah. And Kenny got up with him. Yeah. Well, I got there early. Shocker. I was there early. And I'm sitting in the dressing room and I'm just by myself and Kenny Loggins comes in. Nobody else with him yeah. and sits down. And I'm like, uh, this is kind of awkward. And then he just starts talking and we just start shooting did the you breeze. Know it was and, him or did oh, you absolutely. think for a second no, it might be Jesus? No, 100%. It was so definitely Kenny Loggins. Two guys like in Jesus. the dressing room and he starts the conversation. What was his opening line? Couldn't tell you. I was so taken aback. I couldn't believe it. Uh, it might have been say, you know, who you're here with or something like that. Or, yeah. hmm. you know, just the common starter, you know. And I got to meet uh, Sean from Boys to Men one time. Hmm. Ooh, that Boys to Men record I held on a high pedestal. Again, I'm just a sucker for great music. And yeah. That Boys to Men record. And I got to meet Sean and he was just so cool and so nice. And all these random, again, I just, I just all this stuff that I would never gotten to do if it wasn't for, well, for you what did I did it. You did it. Naomi to do Judd on a test drive. See? Yeah. She Naomi was awesome. Judd. God bless she her was soul, unbel- She yeah. was just a great, what a wonderful human being. She I, was. I had always heard that about her. Yeah. yeah. That's so. very interested in me. Asked all about my family, my kids. Yeah. Where did we come from? I mean, just nothing about her, all about right. her. Right. And it was, I was like, I'll never forget that. Yep. Yep. You take that stuff with you. Yeah, and, and, just, and Ken, remember when we would go and we would do Seagull Industries? We'd go work. <laughs> we 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 would go and we would play drums, and we ah, what like two years in a row? You and I went and we spoke to handicapped, yeah. disabled yeah people, and we performed and did like a quasi motivational thing, and we got incredible. the kids involved with the drums. They're they're still talking about that. They're like, when are you so coming fulfilling. back? You know, it's like crazy. So fulfilling. The Will drums. you let me know if I ever want to go back? If they're still, so they're still doing that. Well, I mean, I'm I'm assuming because I mean, years ago they're like, you yeah. want to come? You want to come? Like, I Let's can't go. make it. Yeah. Let's go back. We should make yeah, it happen. I, well, you're the reason I got into doing the clinic stuff. You know, when I yeah. do, I, I haven't done it in a couple of years, but you're like, go do it, man. And I did some with you, and then you're like, all right, well, go do some on your own. I'm like, I don't want to. I'm scared. You're like, ah, you got it. So yeah. we did it. And, yeah, yeah, man. man. So. Open you got to do. Door to, you got to do PASIC. You got to do PASIC. PASIC. Well, I got, I got, I got pitched to do it one year, but I didn't get picked. And, and it was that year that uh, James and I were doing our bass and drums thing. Yeah. And uh, we we got we 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 got pitched for it, but uh, well, keep submitting because I, I will. well for I will. four years I was on the drum set committee, so I would have had a yeah. hand in selecting you. Yeah. But you know who now is on the inside? Who's a friend of yours who can influence things? Keo Strauss on the drum set committee. Oh. Uh, so he's making decisions that are that are basic ish. So nice. Jim, nice. let's do the yeah. fast five. I'm gonna do just favorite favorite color. Blue. Favorite Red. food. Steak. I love it. Favorite drink. Sweet tea. Uh, so sweet. That's very southern. I like that. Um yeah, favorite movie. Naked gun. Oh my God! When he's peeing in the with the microphone just, on, it's it's a feel good, lighthearted, just yeah. I love no, it. not a serious. Yeah, just not airplane. I love that one too. But Naked yeah. Gun's my go to. How, how, how about how about a favorite actress that you may or may not have a hall pass for? Good question. That's a tough one. Um, man, I really like. Um, oh, what's her name? Um, from uh, White Lotus. Oh, um. Yeah, I know you're talking about the brunette, the Adario, the Adario, Aub- um, Aubrey Plaza. No, no, okay. uh, the Adario. Uh, Let me. I'm looking up White Lotus right now. Let me see. Yeah, the Adar- uh, Alexander the Adario. White Lotus. Let's see if I'm right. On the IMDb. Alexander oh, White the Adario. The White Lo- Jim. Did you watch the White Lotus? No, no, no. Well, you got to watch it. It's re- that is really good. Um, I don't know who my hall pass would be. I don't really have a hall pass, but 
if I was allowed to have all the, the, the girl from Mad Men. Alexandra um, Diodario. I think that's her. Who's the girl? The girlfriend, Christine. Uh, she's got she's got the huge Troxalon. Uh she's a redhead. I'm not seeing this girl's name, but if Oh man, I'm gonna have to look. Can I can I look? Am I allowed to do totally. this? Totally. Yeah, look. All right. Anyone. Is she involved with the Promark family, the Diodarios? No. Okay, so I don't think so. <laughs> this one from the Fast so. Five to the to, Yeah. Let me see. Jennifer right, Coolidge, Adam DeMarco, Megan Fay. I'm gonna find this. There she is. There it is. Alexandria Diodario. Okay. That's her. Hmm. Yep. You guys hear her to hear first. That is Ale <laughs> that is Kent's favorite actress. Well, hopefully, well, yeah. Um, yeah. Is your wife aware killer. that that's a hall pass or? Uh, no, no, that's what I'm saying. I don't have a hall pass. We've actually never talked about it. I don't. No. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Know. I don't recommend ever talking about it. Um, yeah, if I was <laughs> ever alive. Your, your hall pass yeah. would be uh, Carol Burnett, Rich. I mean, you know what? Funny gets me every time. Come on. Um, but you know, she did marry a drummer. She married the the contractor for the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra. Oh. Is that right? Her husband. I did not drummer. know that. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Uh, I knew I liked her. Just amazing. Love the Carol Burnett show. Love you. So, so hey, where's uh, where's five year Kent from now? Five years from now, what what, Man, what, what do you think? If I if I if I was doing the same exact thing, I would be more just as far you know. Obviously, I want to keep my gig, keep playing with Luke. I would love to ride that horse off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have those discussions, you know, and it'd be it'd be kind of nice to just all just stay together and do that thing and just keep continuing uh, progressing in the recording world. Hopefully get more of that going as well. Yeah. And just watch my kids strive and be happy and just, yeah, I think maybe have a couple acres nice. up in the, uh, you know, just let the kids go outside and do whatever they want to do and not get hurt. Not have to worry about a road, a car hitting you or something. Mm. Jesus, know? but yeah, you have experience uh, with that. Know, Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. So, <sighs> Just uh, yeah. I uh, just get a couple acres and have a have a, a legit setup wired for sound, ready to make noise uh, studio, and like, a riding you know, lawnmower, a riding yeah, lawnmower, a riding lawnmower. But uh, just to kind of keep on keeping on, you know, just yeah, stay healthy and keep doing this and get hired and stay with Luke as long as he'll have me, you know? So Wait, you have such I'm a great cool. spirit, cool. man. You have a great spirit Thank and you, you're, and you're you. humble and you're, you're, you're grounded and you're knee deep in gratitude and you're, you know, you're always working on mastering your craft and you, you just, you know, it's a lot of people would say, what do I want to do in five years? Oh, I want to take over. I'm going to run for president. <laughs> like, and, and it's just like, yeah. you are already do, you already are in your lane and in your I'm, purpose. I'm, I'm already doing what I've always want, what I've always dreamed of doing which is incredible and that's which uh, i you know i not many people can say that and so the fact that i've been able to do what i've been able to do thus far is beyond me you know so if i can just keep doing this i love it that is okay with that obviously you know more money be you know we all want to be rich we want to be this and that but i just want to be able to pay my bills and and keep on keeping on yeah, well, you're doing it, man. And that is a perfect yeah. end to the show. What a positive wow. note, man. And it's so good Thank to spend this time together, and we got to make sure that we do it in the flesh. You know, that crazy zombie apocalypse will slow everything down. I know, man. But we're going to be out there. Maybe we'll end up being on some stuff together, but we'll have to catch up for sure. So everybody look up Kent Slusher. That. That's S-L-U-C-H-E-R on Facebook. It's Kent dot Slusher. And then on the gram, as all the kids say, it's at Kent. K with a K sticks with an X eight K sticks eight. <laughs> Sounds so aggressive when you say it. Yeah, man, it all goes down to the like DM. It. Send like Kent it. a DM, like and he'll play on your stuff, man. Um, yeah, and hey, just to close out this show, I think the publisher would be really mad. I got to celebrate this. I got to do the ad. There's my new book, Making hey It in Country Music. An insider's look at the industry. You can get it from Jeff Bezos. He'll have it at your house the next day. Jim McCarthy, JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. We love you, and we appreciate you, buddy. All the things you do for this show, your time and talent. Thank you. Yeah, Thank man, you, we really we really do appreciate it. And all you listeners out there, if you love this show, talk about it. Repost the episode, subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find the show. And we'll, we're going to keep doing this, man. It's going to keep happening whether you want it or not, people <laughs> in podcast land. But thank you so much for listening. Kent, thanks so much, man. Thank you for having me, buddy. All right, man, appreciate let's catch up soon. 
See you, See you next time. This has been the Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.